Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well and I hope that your preparation for the October-November exams are going great. I know you all are preparing because I have been seeing the numbers go up on my videos. Um, so um, it's a good thing and I'm very glad and I hope that everything you need you're able to find. Um, I'm doing this video mainly because I got a request for it. Well, not just one request. I think I got about three requests, including an email where students were explaining to me that they needed to understand how CRISPR works. Um, first thing I want to say is that you already know how CRISPR works if you understand chapter 19. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video, and I hope to keep it really short, possibly about five minutes, is that I just want to explain how, like what exactly it does. Um, all right, just so that you can have an understanding of it and then um, we can go on into um, and then you can be able to like watch the other videos on chapter 19 in order to fully understand it. The image you can see here on the slide is a purple tomato that has recently been approved for the market by the USDA. So that means in the US very soon you will be able to buy purple tomatoes. But how did they make this tomato purple? It was mainly through genetic modification and CRISPR is genetic modification technology. Um, there are lots of concerns around it. There are lots of concerns about its applications, what it can do, what it should be used for. But I would say from a very scientific perspective that CRISPR is technology that is likely to impact us positively um, and has many great applications for what it can be used for. Obviously, there are ethical concerns, like if you watch my chapter 19 videos, I put up like an ethical dilemma for students to discuss, so you can also check that out. Um, but again, um, in terms of things like food preservation and perhaps even making food more nutritious, um, this could be a game changer for um, everyone. Okay, so CRISPR is basically, like I said, a gene editing tool, right? And what it does is it replaces sections of a DNA or removes sections of a DNA. So you can already think of how this could be useful, but I have a slide on that. That would be the last slide. So CRISPR works with an enzyme that is called Cas9. Um, there are other enzymes that are also used in CRISPR, but Cas9 is the most popular one, all right? So I'm just going to use it to explain. So what Cas9 does is it has the ability to go and bind to um, the DNA. But Cas9, if it simply binds to the DNA, will cut at the wrong places. So in addition to having Cas9, the CRISPR technology also uses what is called a guide RNA. Okay, and I'm going to give you an example here. That's not an RWA. Um, sorry, guys, I've had a very long day at work. Um, so writing this out actually just feels really exhausting for me at the moment. Um, but that's the RNA. Okay, so I'm just going to give an example. So let's say we have a DNA sequence here. So let's go CCG. Um, I'm not going to write a long sequence. Um, ATT, um, GCT and TAC. Okay. Um, obviously, if you've studied well, you know that the sequence following this would be G, G, C, right, T, A, A. So that's the sequence that binds to the one on top. So this is the second strand of the DNA. C, G, A, okay, and A, T, G. So this is our DNA, okay? Now let's say within this DNA, we have this sequence here, right? Just going to draw a box around it. And this sequence here um, is a mutation. So it's a problem and it causes perhaps a health condition or it makes the tomato go bad quicker or it makes it less nutritious. You know, you could think of any host of problems, but this sequence here is a, is a, this sequence here is a problem and we want to get rid of it. What CRISPR would do is that it would take the Cas9 enzyme, all right, so Cas9, um, and a guide RNA. So the guide RNA will bind to the Cas9, and what that RNA sequence will have is the complementary sequence to this. So the RNA that's complementary to ATT would be UAA, right? So the CRISPR, um, the Cas9 protein 
has been programmed to cut wherever the RNA binds. So when the RNA comes onto this DNA sequence, it's going to move down the sequence until it gets to ATT, where its complementary sequence is able to bind. Once its complementary sequence binds there, um, Cas9 would then be able to cut at this section. Once it cuts it out, this can be taken out and the DNA will repair itself. So it will use ligase um, to repair itself. You, if you guys have studied chapter six, then you already know how the process of DNA cut, um, DNA being unwound and the small lag strands and all of those things work. So the DNA would basically repair itself. But what you would have done in that case is that you would have removed this problematic sequence in code. Now it's a bit more complicated than that, but this is just a simple way for me to explain it to you. Now, if you think about this, it means that you can basically go into the DNA genome, um, into the genome of an organism, uh, be it a plant or an animal or a human being, and you might be able to accurately remove problematic um, gene sequences. And so what that means is that CRISPR is applicable in a whole lot of things. For example, in cancer, so cancer is caused by changes in the DNA. And obviously, science is advancing to a point where people are beginning to think of the fact that perhaps we don't need to be pumping people with drugs and, and um, x-rays uh, micro and radiation waves or whatever it is in order to kill cancer cells. We can rather just excise the part of the DNA that's causing the, the cancer, right? So that when the cells remultiply, they don't remultiply with that DNA sequence. Um, food preservation is also a thing. Um, and this is an interesting thing because um, CRISPR is not, CRISPR is new technology, but gene editing is not exactly new technology. Um, except, well, it depends on what you consider to be new. But when I was in undergrad, um, this was something we were already talking about. And I was in undergrad quite a while ago, actually. Um, yeah, now that I think about it, I was an undergrad a while ago. So um, it's interesting that this is now becoming like coming to the forefront about a decade later. So it's just very um, interesting. And what one of the projects that we were talking about then was how can we edit the genes of a lettuce so that it lasts longer on the shelf? And what are the components that we might want to put into it? So for example, you might say um, there is a product that's produced by snails. And if we were to take the gene sequence that's responsible responsible for that product and put it into the DNA sequence of a lettuce, perhaps it will keep the lettuce um, skin smooth and fresh. This is just a random example, by the way. That's not exactly what we did or what happened, but I'm just using that to sort of tell you how CRISPR could work in terms of food preservation. You could also go into the food and just remove the DNA sequences that accelerate um, certain rates of degradation if you're able to find it. Um, CRISPR also has, um, I'm going to skip the resurrection of extinct species and come back to that, but in terms of genetic conditions like sickle cell disease, CRISPR can be amazing because sickle cell disease is caused by just one change, like just one base in the DNA that then makes the um, the hemoglobin have a, or rather makes the red blood cells have a sickle cell shape because they become hydrophobic instead of hydrophilic. So if you're able to change that one sequence using CRISPR, then you might be able to um, fix sickle cell disease. And obviously in some more extreme ways, um, scientists are thinking of using CRISPR to resurrect extinct species. And obviously when you think of that, you can easily think of Jurassic Park. And I hope you guys know what Jurassic Park is um please like if you haven't watched the movie please have a look at it but um you can basically use crispr to re-resurrect new um new species and um, to, re to resurrect rather species that have gone extinct and in some cases you might be able to create new species so it is very interesting how crispr works um and also there are some um some, should I say, suggestions that you might be able to use CRISPR to address things like microbial diseases as well. So that might be something interesting that you might want to know about. But this is CRISPR in a nutshell. I got a lot of video um, requests about it. Like I even got emails with students saying, what is CRISPR? How does it work? I want you to know that it is not something complicated at all. It is basically the principles of genetic technology that you have learned, but it works um, because it is more precise size and the reason why it's more precise why it's more precise is because it has a guide rna that leads the cas9 enzyme to a specific gene location in order to cut the gene 
That doesn't mean that CRISPR doesn't make mistakes. In some instances, you might do a gene edit and it results in something else. So if we were to go back to our previous example, say CRISPR made a mistake and instead of cutting at the three sequences, I think those sequences were ATT, um, it took the sequence just before that. So maybe it took the um, G just before that. So in that case, you would have shortened the sequence before um, and that could create a whole host of problems. So there is a chance of even creating mutations in the DNA, but CRISPR can be very effective in fighting genetic conditions, even including things like Huntington's disease, um, autism, I think. Um, I'm not really sure about that one, but you might want to read up on it. But yeah, this is CRISPR in a nutshell, and I see that I have made a 10-minute video instead of a five-minute video. I guess when I start talking about biology, I just can't stop. Anyway, I hope you you guys have a great time preparing for the exams i wish you good luck um and i will again look at the requests i'm getting and see which ones i can respond to but for the most part know that everything that you need is already covered on the channel you just need to watch it patiently um, and you can ask questions that i'll do my best to answer all right guys have a good time goodbye